Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Oh, welcome back to MacBook Studio. We're doing an episode on dancing particles. Yes, we are. <laughs> so that's, uh, my, that's his cue to, to get right into yeah. the interface. Right into it, right into right, it. Right, right, right. So actually, but I want to say the, the idea here is that um, you know, the most effective thing you can do is when you start combining different concepts in motion, rather than just like what a behavior does or what particles do, what, take, what happens if you combine particles and behaviors together? So that's, so, that's what we're going to do. Okay, and you're going to make in the service of creating something cool looking. Uh, ho hopefully, okay. yeah, yeah. And yeah. what I'm going to also do is start with an existing thing and modify it rather than try to build it from scratch. Okay. So the idea is to really have some particles that dance in a very specific kind of way. So I'm going to- Can you make them dubstep? I don't know. Swing dance? Uh, let's find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so particle emitters, and I'm going to go to sparkles, and mm -hmm. I'm going to choose this one called Magic Wand, and I'm just going to apply and start playback. And it looks pretty- uh, Wimpy. Pretty wimpy, yeah. yeah. Pretty wimpy, pretty wimpy by default. So immediately, I'm going to do a couple things to it. First of all, I'm just going to drag it down, and rather than drag it on the screen, I'm just going to go to the uh, inspector and drag it down in Y. Then I'm going to go to the emitter. There's another thing here also, there's a flare I don't care about, so I'm going to delete it out. I don't care about that flare or the source object. I just want the particles out like that, but I want a lot more, okay? So we'll go here and let's crank the birth rate way up and let's also have them come out. Uh, before I do that, let's bring the life way up. Let's bring the life up to like six seconds. All right, so wow. now things are getting a little more interesting. And let's bring the speed way up too, so they really start to move. Now they're really flying. Yep. And let's bring the direction. Uh, instead of they're going in every direction, I'm going to say let's just have them go in a in a little spray, like a 45 degree uh, spray. But let's point this thing up. Let's see, 90. Yeah. So I've got a spray of particles going up right now. Let me make it a more like 40 degrees. And uh, let's get even more going here. So I've got them going pretty fast, and I've got the birth rate 315. Let's crank that even up higher. So I've got a whole bunch of particles. And I can even go higher, but I don't want to affect the playback so much right now. Right now we're at about 13, 13 frames per second. Yeah. And part of this, we're driving a capture system that will actually slow down the performance. So I've got the things flying up. I'm going to add some gravity now. So I'm going to get into some of these behaviors. So instead of going to the library and losing what I'm looking at here, I'm going to go down here and choose, uh, actually stop, let's stop playback. And we'll say add behavior. We'll go to simulations and choose some gravity. And I'll play that back, and then I'm going to crank the gravity way up. Let's say a thousand. Yeah, that's Ooh, a little like too a much. Little Maybe 800. 800. Let's try about 600. So just kind of interactively figuring out maybe 500. Yeah. So I've got this little kind that's of pretty cool. fountain of particles. It's kind of neat, right? Yeah, it kind of really looks like a real fountain there. I'll go back to the emitter, and I also want to adjust how they change color because right now they fade in and off. They kind of turn white when they're done, but I wanted them to turn more of a blue color uh, when they're kind of finished their life. And let's move this blue closer. And the reason we don't see them turn blue is because they live a little too long. So let's make their life more like four seconds and see. And there you go. There we go, they kind of turn blue. Maybe a little too soon, maybe five seconds. Just want to see a little bit of change in color. There we go. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's, you know, I've kind of got an interesting thing going on. And the more particles I add, I'll go up to a thousand. We'll see if it can handle it. Uh, you know, I've got a really kind of nice shower of particles. Now, currently, they're moving all the exact same speeds of this beautiful, perfect arch, which is okay, but I'd like to randomize it a little bit. So I'm going to add some speed randomness, maybe about 50. Uh, so it's a little more natural, because in real life, nothing is perfect, moving exactly the same speed. So now, I really want this to be driven by um, something else. Um, so that it reacts to something. And I'm going to use the audio parameter behavior to have music change what the particles Sweet. do, okay? So I'm going to go back hence to the, the beginning. Hence the music we were listening to earlier? Yes, hence you the were music. That annoyed yeah. to when I was tapping to. Yes, okay. that, that one. Exactly, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing to do is decide what you want to animate. So I'm going to try, the first thing I'm going to say is I'm just going to animate this whole thing to kind of shake back and forth. So I'm going to go to the properties of the emitter to position, and I'm going to right click on the X, or you could use a little menu over here. I like to right click right on the parameter I want to animate. Add parameter behavior, audio. Okay? So that brings up the behaviors inspector. Here's our audio parameters. And it says, what audio do you want me to add? Well, I don't have any audio in the project right now. So I'll go back to 
my file browser and I have a clip right here. So I'm going to drag it in there and it's, it's not the best music I've ever heard in the world, but it's going to do what we want it to do. Let's stop it playing over there, bring it to the beginning. Uh, bring it to the beginning of the project. So now if I go back to this audio parameter behavior and look in the inspector, there's a little well for it. And instead of dragging the audio, because I can't see the audio right here, right? I have to go to audio tab to see it. Right. But rather than that, there's a little pop-up menu and I can select it oh, right there. Nice. Okay. Now, here's kind of the cool thing. By default, it's going to animate uh, the position X of all of the audio, but I don't want that. I just say, let's say I only want it to animate based on the low bass notes. So let's play it for a minute. And we see these bars down here. I really want to focus on those. So I'm actually going to change this graph to say, just show me the bass. So nice. now, so now it's just showing me the little part at the base. And it seems to be moving most around there. So now I'm going to isolate down the part that I want to drive the animation just to, you know, when that gets up to like that. Okay, that's roughly where I want it to go. So when that bar hits there, it'll animate it. So now if I play this back, it looks like nothing's happening. It looks like nothing's happening. Yeah, and the reason is, is the scale parameter is like how much do you want it to move. So I'm going to bump this up to like 100 and see if that'll have an impact. Now you can see the little red line. Yeah. So it's starting it's to moving along. But not much. Let's do 1,000. And don't be scared to use big numbers here. So I think I actually put 10,000. <laughs> yeah, so that's 1,000. So that starts to get interesting looking. So that kind of thing is moving back and forth to the beat of the music. I just think that's... Isn't that kind of cool? cool? It is pretty cool. And we could also have the spread. So while it's playing, this is what I love about the interactivity here. I'm not getting real-time performance. I'm getting enough to see what I'm doing when I'm designing. 7 I go, FPS. Yeah, I can go back to the emitter and maybe narrow this down to about 20 degree spray. So it's not spraying quite so wide. Let's go back to the beginning again. You're up to 24 now. Yeah, and it's moving pretty fast. Um, you can, just to give you an idea of the type of things, this is another inspirational thing, just to give people ideas of, of things they could do. Um, but if we look at the behavior, by default, these peaks are sharp. So it's gonna move very suddenly, but we could make the part peak smooth. It's like quantizing. And it, yeah, it's kind of like quantizing, yeah, yeah. You, from that previous, thing. so now we get something different going on. So you could animate anything about this thing. Okay, anything at all. So instead, Ooh, show me more. Show us yeah, more. I'll show you one, one more thing here. So instead of animating that, I'm gonna set the birth rate. Let's animate the birth rate. So I'll set the birth rate down to zero by default. And I'll take this audio parameter behavior and just to show you a different way to apply it. If we go down here in the behaviors inspector where it says apply to properties, transform position X, that's what it's applied to now, but this two pop-up menu and we see its properties, we see the object itself, emission angle, blah, blah, blah. I actually want to apply it to the birth rate, which is going to be, I believe it's going to be for the cell itself. So I need to drag it onto the cell. And then we should be able to apply to object birth rate. Okay. Got it. So I'm applying it to the birth rate. And by default, it's going to add, which is what we wanted to do. So we wanted to sort of each time there's a, a burst of sound, a burst of particles comes out. That's Does that make sense? So, so it's like cool, it hits yeah. a little burst of particles. And because it happens so fast, the number of particles is pretty small. So in this case, I would really crank up the scale amount. Right now it's 1,000, let's do 10,000. So now it's, it's giving, you know, on each beat, it's giving a little burst of its particles. That's just really, really it's kind good. Of neat, yeah, yeah, right? it is. So just to give you an idea of the kind of things that you can do by combining particles and behaviors together, uh, and then I, this will be sort of too much to be able to play this back, but just to show you an idea, you could put this in 3D space. I'm going to switch to 3D space, and I'm going to take this emitter, and what I did is add, all I did was add a camera, and I'm going to turn on 3D, and what that does, if I rotate this thing, uh, you can see this is now bursting out in 3D, 3D space. space yeah. yeah, so we could also zoom into it. And maybe uh, rotate more on top of it. Pan it over a little bit and we can see what that might play like. But it really opens up all kind of interesting possibilities because now this is in bursting out these particles in 3D space. You could, you know, rotate the camera around it, animate the camera and do all kind of interesting things from there. It's mesmerizing. That's kind of neat, you know, a good yeah. way to tie together uh, to... audio and visual. Yeah, I, 
I don't know why people use that audio parameter behavior for all kinds of stuff. It's yeah, it's just got so much potential to it, and it just sort of getting an idea of, of how you can start to play with some ideas. Hey, just build an emitter and start playing with the parameter. Figure out what you want to animate. Animate scale, position, birth rate, color, you know, go crazy. Uh, and then if it doesn't play back in real time, who cares? Because you can just find something you like and then render it out to get a, something you like. So that's... Dancing that's particles. Yep, dancing so particles. So they're just dancing particles. Parameter behavior and uh, like a gravity behavior all applied to your particles. Yep. And you oh, at the beginning you change the angle, so it's yep. pointing up. Yep, and just changes about anything about it you want. Excellent. So there you have it. Uh, another exciting episode of MacBreak Studio, and uh, if you want to check out uh, Mark's tutorial on working with particle emitters and replicators, we have those on our website, mm -hmm. plus a full 17-hour course if you want to binge watch all, <laughs> all of his yeah, motion tutorials. Yeah, be <laughs> careful. Um, but uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, email us. And uh, if you have specific questions, maybe you want uh, want us or him to cover some specific effect. Uh, we're, yep. we're always Project looking for uh, good ideas to, to demonstrate Talk on about. the show. Yep. So anyway, thanks for watching another episode. And um, we'll see you in the next one.